It's the sugar-sweet sound of a broken heart. Hey, Jealousy. In 1993, Hey Jealousy brought the gin blossoms a nationwide number one. But few know the true spin that this sunshine smash would drive a tortured rocker to a tragic end. I think he felt he had no way out. In 1987, Arizona songwriter Doug Hopkins formed the Gin Blossoms, a group that quickly developed a reputation for big pop hooks and copious cocktails. We were all always drunk in our early days. The name the Gin Blossoms really fit what we were about. It got to an absurd cartoonish level where we would be ordering, I'd say, 57 shots to the stage. And we've all decided to go next door and get rip roaring drunk after the show, okay? But after five fruitless years of trying to get signed by a major label, the Blossoms still weren't known beyond their hometown of Tempe, and Doug Hopkins had developed a very serious drinking problem. It's really hard to watch someone you care about so much going so fast downhill, especially when he's your creative leader. In late 1989, Doug's drinking cost him the love of longtime girlfriend Kathy Swafford. But from that breakup emerged the perfect pop song, Hey, Jealousy. Doug had dated Kathy for a number of years, and they had broken up, and the song was inspired by his at least momentary desire to get back with her and uh, longing for what he'd lost. Included in the pop love letter was a promise to quit drinking, but the band had grown tired of Doug's boozy lyrics and asked him to take it out. There's the line in the song, You can trust me not to think. You can trust me not to think. And originally the line was, you can trust me not to drink. But by this stage, I was so sick of singing about drinking. And so I asked him if I could change the lyric from drink to think. Hey Jealousy got the ear of A&M Records, who promptly stuck the Blossoms in the studio to work on their debut album. But Doug himself was absent or drunk for most of the recording sessions. And the band quickly realized that saving their dreams meant firing their friend. Doug would arrive in the studio late in the day and would often be uh, just too out of it to be able to really work. They wouldn't just watch him die. They wouldn't just let him self-destruct in front of their eyes and, and be party to him. It was the hardest decision that any of us have ever made. It still haunts us all to this day. With replacement Scott Johnson on board, the Gin Blossoms released their major label debut in August of 1992, and within two months, Hey Jealousy was the number one song in America. It was one of the songs that stayed on the charts and on the airways forever. Hey Jealousy. With their star ascending, the Blossoms took off for a non-stop tour of the world. But it wasn't until they rolled back into Arizona that Robin Wilson realized how Doug Hopkins felt about the platinum success of Hey Jealousy. I was in Long Longs, which is the bar we played a million times. And I come out of the bathroom and all of a sudden, pow, right across my face. And he hits me and he grabs me and he goes, you thieving son of a bitch. And I came up and he was gone. His friends dragged him out the door. That night would be among the last Robin or anyone in the band would see Doug Hopkins alive. On December 5th, 1993, Hopkins took his own life in his Phoenix apartment. You know, the record is an absolute monster at this point. And here's Doug in Phoenix by himself. I think he felt he had no way out. It was, you know, the most difficult and saddest and most shocking thing I've ever had to go through. I so wish that it had never happened. Ten years later, Hey Jealousy has outlived the tragedy of Doug Hopkins' self-destruction. And so have the Gin Blossoms, who play the song every night for devout fans and the memory of a dear friend. Hey can't do it, a single show without thinking about Doug. Can't certainly not sing Hey Jealousy without thinking about him, without reliving the entire experience. We all miss Doug so much. He's, he was a brilliant songwriter. He was, he was a great guy.